What's up, y'all? Got a banger from the modern king. Let's get straight into it. If I was a man, and I wouldn't hire a woman. I wouldn't do it. And I said all the time, and I say that, and that is something that women need to consider when they're talking about this stuff. When you are saying that a man complimenting you and saying, "Oh, I really, I, oh, I really like your outfit today," um, is a form of sexism. What is the? If you're a man, why hire a woman, right? So you no, fought all this time to be able to get into the workforce, only to say these are going to be the rules. You know, if you say anything, even if you compliment me, if you if you look at me, anything, I'm going to have a reason to fight you. And by the way, you're going to want to settle and pay me because even just the stain of an accusation is enough to ruin men. So what wow. is what? If you're if you're a guy, right, in this society, in this Me Too environment, in this in this uh, litigation rich environment of misogyny and sexism and all of these claims. What is the value add? What's the the risk? You know, the the benefit and the risk. I just I can't do the analysis and say I'd just be like, no, I'm just not hiring one. Give me all the. No, and I like this because I'm going to piggyback on that. Like, women always like to say, well, men are paid more and women aren't paid as much in the workforce. Well, if that was the case, if men did get paid more, or sorry, if um, if if men got paid more and women got paid less, why wouldn't we just hire women? <laughs> we could pay them less. <laughs> But, you know, they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. I'm a CEO of a quite profitable IT company. I'm a mother as well. So you would say I went through quite a lot in the IT industry. So I have the experience and authority to talk about this topic. Now, what I want to say is that the whole talk about women in IT is usually a bad thing for us. Uh, because basically what it says is... Well, it's okay to have lower income. It's okay to do uh, worse than boys in the IT industry because, well, there's a world conspiracy against you. You know, people hate you. That's why. So that's why I'm against the whole talk. Also, I did some recruiting because I have a company. Uh, And also, I went to a school that had like eight girls and 100 boys. So, you know, I'm quite used to being in around a lot of boys. <laughs> All right, where's the part of the story where you get to the point? Goodness gracious. Begin, here, here's the thing, dude. You want to be a good storyteller? Begin with the end in mind. Like, where are we going with this? The whole thing is, girls are usually quite lazy. They're just Based. not that good programmers. Sorry, but that's true, honestly. Uh, they just don't want to get their hands dirty to do the job. And um, when I tried to do some recruiting, I intentionally wanted to recruit women. And at the end, I failed to do so. You want, do you want to know why? Because most of those girls were usually just cheating, and um, they, just, they were just not good programmers. At the end, I had to recruit boys. Brutal. Uh, and that's Based. why I think the whole talk about let's recruit more women is bad because at the end you're recruiting worse programmers. True. And Jordan Peterson talks about this. He's like, if you want to hire more female engineers, the pool of female engineers is much smaller. Therefore, if you do hire more female engineers, the quality yeah. will be lower. And people are like, well, that's, that's sexist. No, it's not. It's reality. If there's not as many female engineers, but you want to hire them, already that tells you that if there's more men... <laughs> the men are probably better because there's not as many women, right? But if we just want to hire women, the quality is going to be lower. So should I risk the company and hire a lower quality employee? No, 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 no. We don't want that. We want we want the most competency out of the employee. It makes the most sense to me. Like this whole diversity and inclusion and like it's so stupid. Like we, we need to go off of who's the most qualified, not the most diverse. Uh, at the end, your company is going to suffer. Facts. You're going to lose some money. I know it's trendy to talk about women in IT, but I think women should just start studying more and getting the job done. Preach. And I I honestly don't see girls staying up until late at their office and working that often. No, it's usually (laughs) a boy staying there. Why? I don't know. So that's what I want to say. I I think the whole lecture should be removed, and I think it's just bullshit. This is because IT... Bro, she is so based. I like her. I like this lady. The company is going to Oops, suffer. Sorry. Let's go gonna... back, y'all. There's nothing to appreciate a man for. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Go this back. This is because... Okay. ...and working that often. No. It's usually a boy staying there. Why? I don't know. So, that's what I want to say. I, I think the whole lecture should be removed, and I think it's just bullshit. This is because IT CEOs only choose high-performing passionate individuals Facts. for these roles mm-hmm. because of the jobs demanding nature. 
If I were to give a ratio of males to females in this field, it would be three to one. If you think about it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Big back, big back, big back, big back. Don't know where your back ends and your neck begins. Shot fired, shot fired. <laughs> Let me hear what you have to say though, Anila. Enlighten us. There's nothing to appreciate a man for. Yeah, not the infrastructure, not the world we live in, science, technology, engineering, math, keeping the lights on, the water running. Yeah, don't don't thank men for anything. And so the you, food that you eat. You think. <laughs> okay, that was pretty sick. Anybody that's done a tech deck knows that's pretty sick. Dude. I'm just saying. Oh, I love it. I love it. Isn't this easy? <laughs> this man at home didn't hit a single curb for the millionth time in a row. <laughs> hey, is it this easy? So what you're telling me is you've had a rough day and you want to be left alone, don't want to talk to anyone, and don't want to hear about my problems. Okay. Hey, is it this easy? Yeah, it sure was hot outside today, 120 degrees to be exact. But you know what? I didn't about it, and I just cleaned the yard. Hey, isn't this easy? Well, yeah, dude, I got up at 6 a.m. this morning and I went and mowed my yard and weed eat. Weed eat it. Do you think I complained? No. You know, shit happens. It's out of my control. Nothing I can do about it. Life goes on. Won't let it bother me. Hey, is it this easy? This is, what being, this is why being stoic is such a good thing. You control how you react. Things are going to happen to you in life, man. And a lot of times you have no control over it. But the only thing you have control over is how you react. After two months of talking, I told this guy yesterday that I wasn't ready for a relationship. And he responded, it's been... After two months of talking, I told this guy yesterday... Let's see. Okay. It's been... And he responded, it's been great. Hope you have a good one. And then he blocked me. No effort, <laughs> no pressure applied. That's what you want. I am devastated. The girls in the comments of this clip said to this girl that she deserves better, and it's his loss. Yes, queen. He did himself a favor, and yeah. I would advise any man to do the same thing. Facts, dude. Men are emotionally attracted to other men, but sexually attracted to women. But y'all know I'm going to show y'all the clip, so. Boy. Did I hear him right? We're on that back, Turbo. Men are emotionally attracted to other men, but sexually attracted to women. But y'all know I'm a Do you agree with that take? Let me know in the comments. Do you think men are emotionally attracted to other men? Personally, I'm not attracted to masculinity. I'm attracted to femininity. But, but let's, let's, see what he, let's see what he has to say. Show y'all the clip, so roll a clip. I'm not in an uproar because she posted a status that said most men are emotionally attracted to other men, just sexually attracted to women. And right after I seen this queen's video, this came up on my timeline. Scotty, cheat on your girl or snitch on the homie? Uh, now we've all seen this trend going around TikTok. And in every single video... Let me know in the comments, cheat on your girl or snitch on the homie? Let me know. Yo, men say that they would rather cheat on their girl than snitch on their homie. They're more worried about the emotional impact that snitching on their homie would have on their friendship than the emotional impact it would have if you cheated on your girl. A lot of y'all are really in love with y'all homies. Y'all just seek physical attraction from women. And I know y'all about to be tight, but I don't care. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, man, we I got him. I mean, that, it's weird. It's kind of an odd take. I just think, I don't think an attra I don't think attraction's the word that we're looking for. I think just like a level of loyalty. Um, because like men will go out and sleep with multiple women, but most of the time they don't have like multiple guy friends. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. You rather cheat on your man or snitch on the girls? Cheat on my man. What are you saying? Because why? What if I was a man then? I, I definitely cheated. <laughs> Brutal. She personally, I'm not doing like that's that's kind of messed up. Exactly the, the, always the dude that's trying to start. Like, personally, with, if it was me, I, I wouldn't be putting up with that, bro. I, I wouldn't put up with that, bro. Those are the, all the instigator friends, dude. <laughs> what really? You, you, oh, yeah, you <laughs> oh my, oh my. Now I'm cheating for a reason because you obviously lacked in something. I cheated on my neurosurgeon husband. husband with his plastic surgeon best friend. He found out and we separated. He moved to Seattle and a few months later, I followed him 
got a job at the same hospital he worked at, only for him to choose a medical intern over me. This is a safe space, ladies. Tell us about that time you did everything and he still didn't choose you. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. Honey, it's not always your turn. You know what I mean? It's a harsh reality. Respect. Did you think he would overlook you cheating on him with his best friend while you were married just because you followed him to another state? Thanks. Keep in mind, she said this under this tweet. Never argue with a woman. Women aren't arguing with you about what you said. They're going back and forth with you based on how they feel about what you said. For example- Well, the thing is you ask a man how he feels, he tells you what he thinks. You ask a woman what she thinks, she tells you how she feels. Let me know in the comments, do you agree with that? Because men innately biologically, we're providers and protectors and women innately are nurturers. Part of nurturing is being emotionally available to talk about things and how you feel. But us as men, we're very logical and that's just how we are. Oh, you could be talking to your girl and you say, I think you need to eat healthier and go to the gym because you're becoming overweight and it's unhealthy. She's gonna argue with you, not based on what you said, mm-hmm. but based on how she feels about what you said. What yeah. you said is true, but she doesn't like how it makes her feel. So this is why it doesn't make sense. Well, it's tone policing. To argue with a woman. Would you guys cheat for a hundred dollars? No, bro. My girl's priceless. Look at her. I would never cheat on her. Honest? It's not looking good. Sleep. Maybe. Wow. She's beat it best, bro. What do you mean? What do you mean? Maybe. It's a hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. I make that in an hour, and you're gonna cheat on me for some broke bozo that. Okay, but a hundred dollars in an hour, or a hundred dollars in like two seconds. You've literally been dating for two weeks, and you're gonna just cheat on me for a hundred bucks. Like you think that? Two weeks. I mean, bro, come on now. You gotta be smart enough. She's not gonna be loyal to you. You only know this broad for two weeks, and the thing is, she's beat it best. Shots fired! Shots fired! This girl's Midderton. Keep it pushed, bro. I'm not worth a hundred dollars. We're dating. I think he's like a simp. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. We got to end the simp epidemic, fellas. We have to end it. (laughs) Maybe. Yeah. End of the road, boys. This is as far as we can get you safely. This is so dope. All right. Boom up, please. Up. Crushing my suspension. What are you doing? <laughs> Who are you talking to? You're the only one here. I know, but it's my imagination. This is so awesome. Don't pull it out. Good lord. Um, yeah, man. Men are simple creatures. We're very simple creatures. You, as long as you keep our bellies full, our nuts empty, and give us some peace and quiet, that's all we need. That's all we need. Gents, let me know in the comments, what do you really need? What, what three things would it take from a woman for you to be happy? What three things? But this is, this is why men and women are so different. And I don't know if I've talked about this, but men and, men and women's minds are much different. Kind of going back to my point of when men being like providers, protectors, biologically and instinctually, and women being nurturers, right? Men's brains are like boxes, right? We talk about something, we pull out that box, we talk about that box. Let's say we're talking about sports. We pull the sports box out, we talk about sports, then we put that box up. Then you want to talk about food. We pull out the food box. We talk about food. Let's say you want to talk about, you know, getting a coffee. We pull out the coffee box. We talk about coffee, and then we put that up. Nothing is intertwined. Now, on the flip side, a woman's brain is like a ball of wire. Everything's connected. So if we want to talk about coffee, it's also going to be the fact that you didn't wake up and kiss her on the forehead, which is also going to be tied to what happened six months ago, which is also going to be tied to how she felt a year ago about this one thing that kind of correlates to now. So it's like women compare everything that's going on now to what happened previously as men we don't compare we pull out the box we talk about it we put the box up women ball of wire men boxes do you agree with that let me know in the comments do you think that's actually how it is um i don't know if you can hear but Cass is in the cleaning the house again shout out to Cass. w's in the chat for Cass. um and it's with a k it's k-a-s-s i've seen some guys in the comments be like c-a-s-s it's k-a-s-s just letting you know um but yeah that's that men and women are just innately different and it's okay i think that's why 
the dating market is so crazy right now is there's this odd confusion that men and women are equal. I mean, we're equal in the facts that we're both humans experiencing life for the first time, right? But we're so much different biologically, instinctually, that like us being equal is never going to happen. It's never going to happen. And the, f the faster that we start embracing each other's differences and start realizing that we can grow from each other and there's things that you bring to the table versus things that I bring to the table, nobody is the table. You know what I mean? Like there's things that men bring to the table that women can benefit from and vice versa. There's a lot of things that women can do for a man to make him a better man. And there's a lot of things that men can do for women to make them a better woman. Right? Like giving a woman children. I think it brings out her female nature and makes her more feminine. And I just think men thrive in their masculine and I think women thrive in their feminine. What's wrong with being the best version of yourself? It's worked for thousands of years. Why are we trying to change it now? Why are, why are men trying to be women and women trying to be men? I think it's the downfall of the West, really. Like, other countries probably look at us and are just like, <laughs> look at these. Do you think there's trans men and trans women in Russia fighting for, like, equal rights? No. No, there's not. They, they don't care about that stuff. But they're looking at us and they're like... From a, from a global perspective, other countries are probably like, good, the men over there are becoming weaker. Sperm counts are lowering. T testosterone levels are lowering. Like, men look like boys a lot longer. Like, bro, go back in the day and look at a picture of your grandpa when he was 30, and then look at you when you're 30, or even when your grandpa was 20, and look at you when you're 20. Like, my 20-year-old grandpa looked 40. And he, when I was 20, I looked like a little boy. Testosterone levels are just plummeting because... More and more people aren't having kids. And also, more men aren't having to live hard lives. What is the quote? It's like, easy times create, uh, what is it? Hard times create strong men. Easy times create weak men. And so, like, the easier life gets, the weaker we are. We're not as strong. We're not as big. We don't have to deal with as much adversity. Therefore, we get out more and more entitled. That's the problem. This is why I think, like, when you do have children, or if you do have kids, you need to lead these kids. You need to put them through trials and tribulations. You need to work them like a dog. That way, when they get older, they understand that work ethic and the things that they want in their life is going to be in a direct correlation to the effort that they put in. But if you don't make them work hard, then they're going to get old and they're going to be entitled. And no, that's the problem these days. Everybody's entitled. Every kid just goes to high school, which high school was easy. Even I was a I was a C kid and I still made it through high school. And then they go to college. They get a degree that most of the time they don't even use. And then they get out into the workplace and are like, why don't I get paid more? Why, are, why, am I not, why am I not making six figures? It's because you don't have enough value in the market to get paid six figures. Bro, it took me it took me a decade in corporate America to start making six figures. It took me a very long time. I had to cut my teeth for a long while to start making good money in corporate America because my value wasn't there and I understood it. That's why I, I liked what I do. I like what I do now and I just work my butt off. I show up, I work, I don't complain, I control what I can control and everything that happens to me is my fault. There's some guys in the comments that are like, Levi, I don't believe that. I don't believe that everything's your fault. Well, that's fine. If you want to play the victim, go for it, bro. Go for it. You want to play the victim? That's cool, man. That's, that's you. That's, it's just not going to be me. Everything that happens to me is my fault and here's why I think that. It's because I can control it. As soon as I play the victim, I lose all of my power. If you don't want to have your power, great. If you want to blame other people for what's going on in your life, great. It doesn't matter what happens to me. It's always my fault. It's that stoic philosophy, philosophy right? I can only control how I react. I can't control a lot of these other things. So if things happen to me, cool. I'm just going to have to take it with a grain of salt and keep it pushing. What does playing the victim solve? It solves absolutely nothing. So the same thing with approaching women. You're alone. It's your fault. Something happens to you in your life, you're fat, it's your fault. It's like, when I see people complain about like, well, they did this to me, and, and I'm like, dude, you sound like, a, you sound like a, a coward. It's your fault. Take ownership of it. It's okay that it happened to you. Once again, this is something I talked about in a previous episode. It's like, you wanted strength. Like, right, if you're religious, you ask God for strength, he gave you trials. He gave you tribulations. He gave you things to work through. You wanted patience. He gave you things to be patient with, Right? It's as simple as that. You wanted to be you know, the best version of yourself. You thought you were going to be the best version of yourself without trials, without having to go through tough things. Like easy choices, hard life, hard choices, easy life. It's as simple as that. You suffer now or suffer later with your body, with your choices, with everything, man. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.